This is Clicky. It runs anywhere that is a browser. On this side is the canvas. You can draw on it, move it around, rotate it, zoom out, and zoom in. When you zoom in, you see that the image is made up of little squares. This is because Clicky is a pixel-based drawing tool. Next to the canvas are all of the tools, with the most important ones being probably these up here. This highlighted button on the left indicates that I'm currently using the brush. Then if I press on the hand, I'm using the hand tool. With these buttons, I can zoom. And with these, I can undo and redo. To access more tools, I press on this little arrow or on the big button again. This reveals other tools, such as the paint bucket. When I change the tool, this tab on the left changes. This is because it is the active tool tab. In it, you can access all of the settings and actions of the currently active tool. So for our brush, I can change its color with the color picker. Or if I press on the eyedropper, I can pick a color from the canvas. Or in this dialog, I can manually type a color value. If I want to draw really precise lines, I can use the stabilizer dropdown for smoother, more precise lines. Here's another row of tabs. Each of these represents a different brush with its settings. These sliders control the size and opacity of the pen brush. When I double tap on the slider, I can manually enter a value. I can relatively change its value by dragging with the right mouse button. Also while dragging, when moving the cursor away, it becomes more fine-grained. Next to these sliders are pressure sensitivity toggles. These are useful if you have a stylus because you can decide which setting is affected by pressure sensitivity. The next brush tab is the blend brush. Then here is a sketchy brush. The pixel brush is useful for pixel art and the cameo brush, which has symmetry and gradient. Then these last two brushes here are special. The smudge brush doesn't place new color, it just pushes it around the canvas. And the eraser removes color. Next, let's have a look at these three buttons up here, which you can also access in the file tab. If you want to save your drawing, press on the blue save button. And now a PNG file has been saved to our downloads folder. Press on the new image button to start a new drawing. Here you can choose the format and background color which can also be transparent. After creating a new image, you can still go back with undo. The button with the folder icon lets us import an image. After choosing a file, I see the import dialog. Here I'm given the option to import as layer or image. If I import as a layer, the image is placed on top of the existing. Or if I import as image, it is just this image now. Alternatively, you can import by dragging an image into the tab. I can directly decide to import as image or layer. It is also possible to import an image by copy-pasting. First I copy, then I paste. This also brings up the import dialog. One thing I'd like to mention about this dialog is that you can already crop your image in here. So I could decide to only import the apple. Since I've mentioned copy-paste, you can also copy a drawing from Clecky into a chat window or a document that you're working on. You can do this by simply pressing Ctrl C Selecting the area you'd like to copy, right-click, copy image. Or press on the blue to clipboard button if you see it. Now the image is in your clipboard and you can paste it anywhere you'd like. You can also access the copy dialog by going into file and then copy. Now let's look at layers. Right now I have one layer which is highlighted. That means when I draw, I draw on this layer, layer 1. I can add another layer, layer 2, which sits on top of layer 1. So when I draw on layer 2, that drawing will sit on top of layer 1. Let's add a third layer, layer 3, and let's draw with a different color. Because this layer is on the very top, so is this line. However, I can change this by reorganizing the layers. Now I put layer 3 underneath layer 2, so now layer 2's line sits on top. What else can I do? I can change the opacity, and I can change the blend mode. This decides how the active layer gets mixed with everything that is underneath. So with multiply, layer 2's line turns darker when it intersects with the other lines. You can also duplicate layers. So now we have this layer twice. And you can merge layers. 
which combines two layers into one. And when you merge, you actually have a list of options. These are there for specific clipping operations. For example, if I choose destination out, the shapes of the top layer will be erased out of the bottom layer. Now we see that layer one turned transparent here. You can also rename layers and you can delete them. Now let's start with a new image and give it three layers and let's draw something. Let's use the simple drawing to explore the other tools that Klecky has. First, the paint bucket. With a paint bucket, I can fill in closed areas with a color. However, what you notice is that the edge of the filled area doesn't look so nice. To avoid that, there's a better way of using the paint bucket. For that, I choose the layer beneath the lines. I choose a grow factor. In this case, two works pretty well. And when I fill, the coloring is much cleaner. Next, the gradient tool. With this, you can draw a color gradient on the layer. Let's draw a sky with this. Here are different modes. Let's use the radial mode to draw some clouds. Next up, the shape tool. This allows you to draw rectangles, ellipses, and lines. If you rotate your canvas, you can draw rotated shapes. Let's draw a green rectangle for the ground with two ellipses for a shadow. And let's add a speech bubble on top of everything. For this, we draw a white ellipse and a little wedge. All it needs now is some text. You can use the text tool by clicking on the canvas where you'd like to place text. This brings up the text tool dialog. Here I can zoom and adjust the position. As you type into this text box, the preview updates. You can also adjust color, size, font, formatting, style, and opacity. Let's go with this. Also, like with the shape tool, if I rotate the canvas and I place text, the text will be rotated. Let's save this and take a look at the saved image. This file is a PNG. That means it can only ever have one layer. If I open a new tab of Klecky and I open this image, you can see that it only has one layer. So if I open this image again one day later and I'd like to change the background, that will not be so easily possible. It would be nicer to have all of the layers again. For that, we go into File and then instead of choosing Save PNG, we choose Save PSD. Now we see that there's a PSD file. PSD is a file format which supports layers. So if we open this in a new tab, you can see all of the layers again and I can easily change the background. Then there's also the Edit tab. In the Edit tab, you can make many adjustments to your image. You can transform a layer, you can crop it, you can flip it, rotate it, change the colors, you can distort it, you can blur it. If you open a small pixel art image, you can make it large while keeping it sharp. You can also easily color drawings that lack transparency or layers. For that, you use the to alpha operation. This isolates the lines from the image and now I can quickly color it using the paint bucket. The file tab is already a bit familiar to us, but we haven't looked at the browser storage yet. If I press on store, you see that this preview updated, including a time indicator of when I last stored. Now if I reload Klecky, the drawing is restored with all of its layers. So this image is stored in the browser. It is only stored on this computer in this browser. That means if I open Klecky on my phone now, this drawing will not restore on my phone. Also, if I make some changes, you see that the preview has not updated. When I reload, my changes are now gone. If I want changes to be stored, I need to explicitly press the override button. Now if I reload, my changes are restored. If I want Klecky to start with a blank canvas again, I press clear. And now if I reload, there's an empty canvas. You can upload images with this button, which uploads to Imager. There it is hosted as an unlisted image, meaning only people who have access to your link can view this image. After uploading, you're provided with a deletion link. When you visit this link and press yes, your uploaded image will be removed from Imager. Lastly, there's the settings tab. Here you can change the language and you can change the layout of the UI. Finally, let's take a look at shortcuts. I showed you buttons for the hand tool, zooming, undo, and redo, but you can also do many things with shortcuts. 
For example, if I'm using the brush and I want to quickly move the canvas, I can hold spacebar and then I drag. Or I drag the middle mouse button. Or I press the arrow keys. To rotate, I could go into the hand tool here and press these buttons. Or I simply hold the R key and then I drag around the center. Or I hold the R key and press the arrow keys. To zoom, I could press these buttons. Or I could scroll. Or press plus and minus. Or I could hold the Z key and drag horizontally. To undo, I can press Ctrl Z. And to redo, Ctrl Y. To use the eyedropper, I could press here on this button. Or I simply hold the Alt key and then drag. Or I use the right mouse button. I can bring up brush settings next to my mouse cursor by holding Ctrl and Alt. Now in this overlay, I can change the color, brush size, and opacity. I can clear the layer with the Delete key or with Backspace. Or I can fill the layer by pressing Enter. I can save my image with Ctrl S. And I can save to browser storage by pressing Ctrl plus Shift plus S. The Help page has a complete list of all shortcuts, including touch gestures. Clacky is a free tool, has no ads, and is open source. So if you find it useful, please consider donating.